Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to explore the world of the Polish Kingdom, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and the interesting aspect known as the Crown of Poland. We'll also pursue some survey data to answer an intriguing question. Who would Polish citizens prefer to sit on the throne today? Dating back to around 966, the Kingdom of Poland was born when Mieszko I and his pagan Slavic kingdom accepted Christianity in a historic occurrence referred to as the Baptism of Poland. This was a defying moment marking the establishment of the Polish state under the initiative of Mieszko's Piast dynasty ancestors. Mieszko's eldest son, Boleslav I, Trobry, then succeeded him, becoming the first crown king of Poland in 1025. Our journey brings us to the Union of Krevo, a series of prenuptial agreements made at the Kreva Castle on August 13th, 1385. These agreements involved Jogaila, the Grand Duke of Lithuania, and concerned his forthcoming marriage to Queen Jadwiga of Poland, who was underage at the time. Jadwiga also known as Hedwig, made history by becoming the first woman to be crowned as monarch of Kingdom of Poland. The personal union between Poland and Lithuania was cemented once Jogaila affirmed the prenuptial agreement on August 14, 1385. The agreements encompassed a commitment to Christianity, a promise to reclaim lands taken from Poland by neighboring countries, and the establishment of a personal union Following his baptism at the Wawel Cathedral in Krakow on February 15, 1386, Jogaila officially adopted the name Vladislav, and three years later he married Jadwiga. Fast forward to July 1, 1569, and we witness the birth of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth through the Union of Lubin, establishing a real union between the Crown and and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Prior to this, the crown of the Kingdom of Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania were simply in a personal union. The Union of Lubin also transitioned the crown into an elective monarchy, culminating in the end of Jagiellonian dynasty and the election of Henry de Vola as monarch. In a turn of events, Henry de Vola was crowned King of France on February 13th, 1575, and he consequently left the Polish throne on May 12th, 1575. In his wake, Anna Jagiellon was elected. Anna, the daughter of Polish king Sigmund I the Old and Italian Duchess Bona Sforza, remained single until the age of 52, following the death of her brother King Sigmund II Augustus. The last male of the Jagiellonian dynasty, she was sought after by those aspiring the Polish throne to sustain the dynastic tradition. In 1576, alongside her then fiancé, Stephen Bathory, she was elected co-ruler of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth in a formal and distant marriage arrangement. After Stephen's death on December 1586, Anna had a chance to reign solely, but chose to support her nephew, Sigmund III Vasa, instead. His reign marked the beginning of the House of Vasa's 80-year rule on the Polish throne from 1587 to 1663. Moving forward to May 3rd, 1791, we find the Constitution of Poland the second oldest codified national constitution globally and the oldest in Europe. Its principal author was Svetislav II Augustus, the last monarch of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, who envisioned the crown as a constitutional monarchy akin to Great Britain. This constitution anchored Catherine II of Russia, who argued that Poland required Russian Empire's consent for any political reform, and as a consequence, Russia invaded the Commonwealth in 1792. The constitution, however, survived for less than 19 months. One unique idea that surfaced in Poland is the concept of the crown of the Kingdom of Poland. 
The crown of the Kingdom of Poland emerged in the 14th century as a political and legal construct in Poland. This concept recognized the unity, indivisibility and continuity of the state, altering the perspective on state ownership. Instead of being seen as the patrimony of the monarch or the dynasty, the state began to be considered the common good of the political community comprising the kingdom. This innovative perspective allowed the state to persist during the periods of interregnum and led to the establishment of a system particular to Poland, emphasizing the parliamentary rule of the nobility and the elective freedom of the ruler. Now, having looked into the history of Kingdom of Poland, let's now turn our gaze towards the future. Who do Polish citizens envision on their throne? And what function should this monarch serve? So, here are the results of our survey. A small portion, about 10%, proposed the Wettins of Saxony assume the throne. The House of Wettin is a story dynasty of German kings, prince electors, dukes and counts that once ruled lands within the current German states of Saxony, Saxony-Anhalt and Thundria. It's one of the oldest European dynasties originating from the town of Wettin in Saxony-Anhalt. Although less renowned, the Albertine branch had control over most of Saxony and impacted Polish history. Today, the title of Kings of Poland is disputed within the house, primarily between Prince Alexander and Daniel von Sachsen. Another 10% favored the house of Czartoryski. This princely family has roots in Lithuania and Ruthenia. Prince Adam Karol Czartoryski, who is both Polish and Spanish aristocrat, currently heads this Polish house. Interestingly, 18% suggest that the Polish Nobility Association should conduct elections. Established in 1995 in Gdansk, this sociocultural organization aims to unify the nobility of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, preserve the noblest cultural monuments, popularize the history and traditions of Polish nobility, and promote knightly ethos. Around 13.5% had other preferences and we let them to write their own. Of these responses, 26% mentioned the Habsburgs, proposing either the current head of the family, Karl Habsburg, or one of his cousins. Another 27% suggested various alternatives, ranging from open elections to extinct and even legendary dynasties. A significant 46.5% proposed other dynasties such as Romanovs, Windsors and descendants of the Pius dynasty. Notably, 48.5% clearly stated that they do not want a monarchy. So, what role would Polish citizens envision for a monarch? Approximately 30% prefer a ceremonial role while 28.5% advocate for an executive function. About 2.5% remained unsure, and the remaining 39% declared that they wouldn't assign any role to a monarch. What are your thoughts on this? Who do you believe should be the monarch in Poland? I welcome your comments and thoughts on this intriguing topic. Also, a shout out to our patrons who help us produce our videos. If you are a patron, you have exclusive access to Monarchy Report in 10 Republics. And if you're not, join us and support our production. Thanks for joining. See you in the next one.